everybody. Glory to his name. Always good to give glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Grace Baptist Church on a wonderful spring morning, Sunday morning. If you would, take your hymn book, if you got one right there in front of you, and stand with me, please. We're going to sing 334 at Calvary, at Calvary. Years I spent in vanity and pride. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. God's word at last my sin I learned then I trembled at the law I'd spurned till my guilty soul imploring turned Calvary mercy there was great and grace was free pardon there was multiplied to me there my burdened soul found liberty Keep it up now. Now I've given to Jesus everything. Now I gladly owe him as my key. Now my raptured soul can only sing. on the last one now. Oh, uh, praise the Lord. Yes. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Amen and amen. Well, I tell you what, I'll never forget the day, 2014, I was with my wife and we had gone to Israel. And there we were. And by the way, we need to be in prayer for that land right now. Uh, the Bible said, I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And that was an Abrahamic covenant. And I'm telling you, Israel needs to be prayed for right now. But I was, uh, I was standing there uh, in Gordon's Calvary. Never forget walking into a little gift shop area. I did not know what to expect. I knew that we were going to be going into seeing Mount Calvary, and we were also going to be able to witness the garden tomb. And we walked back to Gordon's Calvary, walked a little distance, and walked up on some bleachers, and we looked over, and there was Golgotha, the place of a skull. And there was Mount Calvary. And something overwhelming came on me. And I told my wife, I said, right there. I said, my sin debt and the entire sin debt of the world was paid for right there, right there. And then you just look over a few hundred yards, and there's the empty tomb. <laughs> and I said, and he sealed it by rising again the third day. And we serve a resurrected Savior, amen? And that's why we have church on Sunday, the first day of the week, because it is the sun day. Amen. It's an honor of our resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
And we're so glad to have you here on a Sunday morning, so thankful. Isn't it a beautiful morning outside? Oh my goodness, man. I thank God for this beautiful weather out there and uh, just a great spring morning here in Colorado. And I don't know about you, but I looked over there at Pikes Peak and I saw it covered in all that wonderful, beautiful white snow. And I just said, thank God I get to live in this wonderful state called Colorado. Amen. And, uh, and be able to be reminded of the creator that he is. We're glad to have you here this morning. We trust that if you came to church and you have a burden, a heartache, a need, Maybe perhaps you're going through a trial, or perhaps maybe you came in here and you're not saved. That before you leave here, that burden, that heartache, that trial, that need will be lifted. And if you're not saved, that you can walk out of here knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you were to die, you'd go to heaven. There is nothing like the peace of knowing Christ came into the world to save sinners uh, he came to seek and to save that which is lost, and he loves you. And, uh, and I tell you, uh, there's not anything that you've ever done that is so great that he can't forgive you. And, uh, oh boy, if you haven't put your faith in him, make sure you put your faith and trust and confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we come to this time in this service to thank you for what you do. We just sang about Calvary. And Father, we'd be lost had there not been a time 2,000 years ago that your son Jesus died on the cross, was buried and rose again. And Father, we were reminded today of the wonderful grace and mercy that you bestowed upon us. And each of us that are in this room that are saved today rejoice in our salvation And we pray for those who may have come into our midst that are not saved, that they too will come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Father, bless, I pray, this service. We're so grateful to be here. Bless the choirs they sing for us. Bless all the uh, congregational singing, the special music. Father, we love you. Thank you for your goodness. Bless, I pray now, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated.
God. Amen. What a blessing. Boy, when Jesus is four days late, he's still on time. Amen. He's never late. Amen. He's always right on time. Oh, what a blessing to have visitors with us today. We're glad to have Austin Montgomery. Where are you at, Austin? Would you hold up your hand? We're glad to have you here. God bless you, buddy. We're glad to have you. Thank you for coming. Now, maybe there's a member in our church who would love to be a blessing, but Austin says on his note down here, I will need a ride to church. And I don't know about you, but if we could be a blessing to help pick somebody up like that, if you'd see me on that, I'd be able to see if we can't help him. Amen. Thank you, brother. And what a blessing to have Austin with us, and uh, we're truly a blessing. And then, of course, we have Eldon and Lisa Martin all the way from Canyon City, praise the Lord, and they're visiting with us. But the Martins hold up their hands. Amen. We're glad to have you here. Amen. Give them a big hand. And great thing about that, they live in the same city my father lives in, amen, and uh, what a blessing to have them here today, and we're so grateful. And we're also glad to have Will, I believe, is it Chipley? Where are you at, Will? Oh, God bless you, buddy. We're glad to have you here, amen. Thank you for coming, amen. Truly a blessing to have you here. And then, of course, we have Laura and Lucas Johnson. Where are you at, uh, Laura and Lucas Johnson? God bless you folks. We're glad to have you here, amen. Thank you for coming. You're a guest of Brad Haley. Brad Haley invited you to come. We're so glad to have you here. I'm not sure about the company you're keeping, but we're glad to have you here. And uh, amen, what a blessing. And then we're glad to have uh, Mrs. Marky Graham, and uh, God bless you, and her family, amen. And we're glad to have them here, amen. And uh, what a blessing. Uh, maybe you're a first-time visitor, and we did not get a card on you, but you're visiting for the very first time. We'd like to get a visitor's card on you. Uh, we'd like to uh, give you a call, let you know how important it was for you to be here. And if, you didn't, if you're visiting for the first time and you did not fill out a card, but you're here for the first time, would you hold up your hand like that? Ushers are walking your way, and we're looking to see if there's any first-time visitors that we may have missed. All right, not seeing any. We're glad to have each and every one of you here today. So grateful for that. Take your hymn book, if you would, and open up. Uh, are we singing 365 or 366? page 366. So let's stand together. Amen. Jesus is coming again. What a great, great song. Amen. Let's sing it together. All right. At a good pace now. Marvelous message we bring. Glorious carol we sing. Wonderful word of the King. to have each of you here. Take that hymn book, set it down right there. Let's get around. Let's shake some hands. Let's welcome one another to the house of the Lord. Amen. Mount 
molten and metal the same All earth and heaven proclaim Jesus is coming again Coming again Coming again Maybe morning, maybe noon Maybe evening and will be soon Coming again Coming again What a wonderful day it will be Jesus now, standing before him at last, trial and trouble all past, crowds at his feet we will cast, Jesus is coming again, coming again. That's good, sing it out. come again. I'm going to ask the ushers to make their way forward. While they're coming, I have these announcements for you. Please listen to these announcements. Please plan to attend the baby shower for my daughter, Cherish Miller, and little baby Lila this Friday, April 19th at 6.30 p.m. You can see Mrs. Miller. She's handing out announcements. But ladies, we'd love for you to be a part of that. And then, of course, our Rocky Mountain Ladies Conference is coming up. An email will be going out soon to cover all the details. But this is with Mrs. Amy Vasek. And Mrs. Vasek is a tremendous lady of the Lord. Her husband's a great man of God. She's going to be doing our ladies' conference. And ladies, I'd highly recommend that you get signed up for that and come to this conference. It will bless you. I don't understand why our church will host it and our ladies won't come. Our ladies. Ladies, please come. I encourage you to be there. Uh, we have over 400 ladies that will travel from all over to come. And you live right here. This is your church. Be here. Come to the It will help you. I promise you. And then, of course, uh, pick up the bi-monthly devotionals for the teens and adults at the bookstore, how important that is to do. And then, of course, all the singles are invited to an activity at Pastor's House this Thursday night. Brother Josiah Johnson has all the details, but all the singles of our church, we would love to have you come over to our house. We're going to have a great time. We have a pool table downstairs that we can uh, mess around and play some games of pool. And uh, we're going to do some eating, some fellowship. And uh, we want to invite all the singles to come. I like to be able to hang out with our singles. It's going to be a great, great time at our house. And that's going to be coming up. And then, of course, um, on May 12th through the 15th, we have a missions conference coming up. Yeah. You do not want to miss this missions conference. Uh, it's called Global Harvesters Conference. It's for our church. And there's going to be a lot of churches represented that are coming around the state and around the nation. They're going to be coming out here, pastors as well. And so you'll definitely want to be a part of that. Please make note of that if you would. And then the last thing that I want to be able to cover with you is that men, we have a men's prayer meeting, 530 every Sunday night, 530 every Sunday night. We meet in room 112. And I've been sending out text messages, but I've been missing a lot of guys. Guys, I encourage you. This kind cometh but by prayer and fasting. And we can never see God do anything great until we've been endued with power from on high. And so, men, I'm asking you, please come join us in room 112 at 530, 30 minutes before church, uh, to pray with us. And uh, you say, well, I'm just not comfortable praying in public. You won't have to pray aloud. You can actually pray with somebody who will pray with you. And, uh, and if you don't feel comfortable praying aloud, uh, you don't have to. You can just be there and pray in silence. But we want you to be there. And then, of course, also we do that on Wednesday nights at 630. So, men, please make note of that. Father, I pray that you'll bless the offering. May it be sufficient for the needs of this church. And uh, we'll thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give.
Hey, when, uh, when you're at the end of your rope, don't just uh, tie a knot and hold on. No, no. You, uh, you let go. And he's got this. God's got this. You've got to learn to lean on him. You can remain uh, seated. We're going to sing Learning to Lean, page 422, all right? Stand with me, please. Grab your Bibles and turn to the book of Genesis. It will be in chapter number 26. Genesis chapter 26. We will read verses 18 through 22, and we'll read these verses responsively. Genesis 26, 18 through 22. Verse number 18. And Isaac digged again the wells of water, which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. And the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Essek, because they strove with him. And they digged another well and strove for that also, and he called the name of it Sitna. And he removed from thence and digged another well, and for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth, and he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you now for the reading of your word, and I pray that you would please uh, take this scripture and uh, give us a heart of understanding, give us ears to hear, as Dr. Owens will come and proclaim and, and give unto us, Lord, what he's planned, prepared, and studied for this hour. Use him greatly. Let your spirit have great liberty through him. And please, I pray that you would get all the honor and the glory from the proclamation of your truths. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. There's no treasure on earth 
that could move heaven's heart and purchase a pardon for me. No jewels or gems that I bring could start to pay my penalty. Even silver and gold are offerings to pour to take away guilt. But the truth is, my Lord, that The temple they came and the altars ran red year after year after year. And for all of the loss and all the life shed, still no true peace was near. Until you came to us with one perfect lamb, with thorns on your head and nails in your hands. And stand redeemed all the riches of this world could never be enough to take away one sin it's only by the blood you've done what nothing and no one else could do and the song of my soul is lord worthy are you It's only by the blood you poured out for me. It's only by the blood I can stand redeemed. All the riches of this world could never be enough to take away one sin. It's only by the blood. What a blessing it is to have Brother Jeff Owens with us. Dr. Owens um, is truly a great man of God, pastoring the Twin Rivers Baptist Church in North Carolina, a man that has, um, has so much to give, and they did a wonderful Sunday school lesson for us. If you weren't here for that, I'd ask you to go and re-listen to that, and uh, I'll just uh, whet your appetite. He said, I wish that you would be more like Satan. Now, if that piques your interest, go back and watch it. It will definitely help you. Amen. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't know about, uh, about that, but uh, it's really a tremendous lesson. It really is. And, uh, the, boy, the thoughts of that. He's going to come preach to us. Let's welcome him, shall we? Thank you. Thank you, preacher, for letting me come. Thanks to all of you for being in church this morning. You're in the right place. You're in the right place. Uh, I have a, a book table with me if you get a chance to come by. I'm not going to talk about it, but I just want to tell you that it's out there. Earlier, we read from Genesis chapter 26, verse number 19. I want to read that verse to you again, if I may. It says, And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. I want you to understand something. That word digged in the passage that we read together a moment ago, that word digged is used six times, digged. Now, when I was in high school, I played a little bit of football. Our coach, uh, he wasn't always real good with words, but there was a word that he used a lot with us. We'd be on the field and he'd say, dig, 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 get out there and dig. I'm not even sure he could talk. Right. But whatever's going on, uh, you know, Coach McKinney would say, 
Dig, dig, Owens. Dig, dig, boys. Let's dig. Let's make this thing happen. You know, some of us need to learn how to dig. Amen. Dig. This story that we read, uh, it takes place in a valley. Many years prior in this valley, the servants of Abraham had dug some wells. It was in a time of need. They needed the water. The Philistines came and filled in the wells with dirt and dried them up. It says in Genesis 26, 15, For all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. Isaac is now in that valley. God is blessing him greatly in that valley. Genesis 26, 12 says, Then Isaac sowed in the land and received in the same year an hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Isaac's servants had dug in that valley and reopened those wells that had been filled up with dirt. It says in Genesis 26, 19, And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. They used a shovel. I'm going to show you. They were actually digging. Now understand, the stories in the Bible are true. They were digging. They got them a shovel. And they were just digging. The wells had been dug once before. They're in the valley. And the men are just digging. They're digging. The Bible tells us that Isaac was actually living in that valley. It says in verse 17, And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley. Now, folks, the valley pictures a valley that we might come across in life. The valley is the opposite of a mountaintop. The valley could picture the tough times of life. The valley could picture the down times in life. The valley could picture the burden times in life. And in this, it tells us that Isaac, he was living in the valley. Now, it sure is pleasant when we passed through the valley, but in this case, he was living in the valley. But you know what was going on while they were living in the valley? They were digging. They were digging in the valley. They just kept digging. They said, we're in a valley, but we're going to get something done while we're in this valley. They dug in the valley, and the Bible says they found a well of springing water. What happened? They kept digging in the valley. That well was a blessing. But that well only came as a blessing because they were digging in the valley. Digging in the valley. That well, it meant strength to their weary souls. But they would have never gotten the strength in the valley had they not been digging in the valley. Hey, that well meant refreshment, but they would have never been refreshed in the valley if they had not been digging in the valley. They were not in the valley whining. They were in the valley digging. They were digging in the valley. I don't think any words in the Bible are there by accident. I don't think there were any uh ohs with God when he put something in the Bible. I'm so glad that they learned to dig in the valley. That well, it meant life. But it only meant life if while they were in the valley, they were digging in the valley. The well brought the water. The well brought the life. The well brought the refreshment. But they didn't get it by lying down and moaning. They got it by standing up and dig. And I think of my coach. Dig. Dig, Owens. I can remember times in life when I was under the gun and I wondered if I would make it. Then I would look back at my coach on the sideline saying, Dig, Owens. Dig, buddy. Get in there. Get in there. You can make it. You can take it. Dig. 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 Hey, that well meant encouragement, but they had to dig Amen. to get the well. Amen. Hey, that well meant satisfaction, but they had to dig in the valley. And actually, it was not just one well. 
I was looking. It said there were wells. Can I tell you something? Are you in the valley? Are you in the valley? Could I offer you something? Somebody needs to get your shovel out. You want to survive the valley? What do you do? Dig! 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 That's how you'll survive that valley. You see, in the valley, there was a blessing. Maybe they couldn't have found it anywhere else. Yeah. Let me talk to you about this thought this morning. Keep digging in your valley. Keep digging in your valley. Let me say, first of all, keep digging in the valley because you can get closer to God that way. Keep digging in the valley because you'll get closer to God that way. Listen to this verse, Psalm 23, 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I was in the valley, but you know who I found there? I found God there. I found Jesus there. I found the Holy Ghost of God there. I got my shovel out. I felt like the world was going to cave in on me, and I said, I'll dig myself out of this mess. And in the valley, God showed up. He said, give me a shovel. Ha! I'll tell you, Song of Solomon chapter 2, verse number 1 says, I am the rose of Sharon, and I am the lily of the valley. I'm the lily of the valley. He said, thou art with me. Where? In the valley. Folks, it's often that it's in the valley where we meet God. Preacher, I I don't want to relive my valleys. I don't want to go through them again. But I don't want to give any of them up. Amen. There were times in life where I felt all alone. I didn't think there was a human on earth that could help me. And I was at the bottom. And somebody showed up. Right. Right. Yeah. The blessed Amen. Holy Spirit of God showed up and said, Jeff, don't worry. You're not here alone. I have not left you. I will not forsake you. Hey, some of you that really been through it, can you think back to when he showed up? And you met a God that you had never really totally met. I know you were saved, but you saw a part of him that you didn't get to see on the mountaintop. When I was in the valley, there was something about it. There was something about being in that valley. It was almost like I was forsaken, and I'm thinking, who would be in a valley like this? And God said, son, I'm here. That's why you're here. I want us to have a little private appointment. But they were digging in the valley. Hey, if you're in the valley right now, look for Jesus. He's a lily of the valley. He's there. Secondly, keep digging in the valley is to be more productive for him. Productive. Uh, In 1 Samuel 6.13 it says, And they have... Beth Shemesh were reaping their wheat harvest in the valley. See, this scripture references in the days of Samuel, the Ark of the Covenant had been stolen, which was a sad time. It was a time they were in the valley. But the Ark of the Covenant is being returned and they are rejoicing. But it says while they were in the valley, in a tough time, they were reaping. They were reaping. You know what they were doing? They were in a tough time, but they were digging in the valley. Digging in the valley. They kept digging in the valley. And they were reaping while they were digging. Uh, Listen, did you know that there are some times you can be more productive in the valley? In the valley? Uh, David defeated Goliath in a valley. I wonder, I wonder if the people there understood that. It was a time of valley for them. God said, let me show you a victory. Let me show you what I can do. We're not going to do it on the mountaintop. We're going to do it in the 
valley. Down in that valley is where it took place. Folks, I, I try to help a lot of people. I try to encourage a lot of people. And what I'm about to say is going to seem a little heartless. Let me tell you, if you're in the valley, don't just lay there. Get up! Get up, my friend! Dig! 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 You ought to live every day until the day you die. Live it all. Squeeze everything out of it that you can get. Hey, senior citizen, don't you give up. You grab you a shovel and get up and dig. Those of you that have heartaches and burdens and the illness that's overtaking you, pick up a shovel while you're sick. You say, that's not good medical advice. It's spiritual advice and it works. I had a man that was my deacon for years. He's, he's probably on his face right now praying for me. He has multiple sclerosis and he was special forces in the military. He got sick and uh, his illness really took over his body. He'd go to bed at night and when he'd wake up in the morning, his entire body was a mangled muscle ball. His arms and legs would pull into the fetal position. And he, when he'd wake up, he'd just be like a, a knot. Sunday morning would roll around, he'd wake up and his wife and his six kids would start getting ready for church. And this is what he would do. He said, preacher, I, I get up every Sunday morning. He said, and I, I scoot myself over to the edge of the bed. I try to get my legs to let me get out of bed so I can go to church. He said, and sometimes I'll just roll myself off the bed, I'll hit with a thump. My wife will come and check on me. I do this every Sunday. He said, she'll come check on me. He said, I, I, try, I try to get my arms untucked from my chest. He said, I, I start grabbing the carpet. He said, preacher, I, I, I pull myself toward the bedroom door. And then I start pulling myself toward the front door. Because I want to go to church. And I got up. To go to church this morning. He said, my wife and kids, it's about time to leave. He said, time and time again, I finally just collapsed by the front door. I've drugged my virtually lifeless body to the front door. My wife will lead down and kiss me and say, honey, we'll see you after church. He said, but preacher, I tried. And I'm going to do it again next week. I'm going to drag myself as far as I can drag myself. Dig. Dig, Christian. Dig while you're in that valley. Dig. I don't know what you're going through, but you get you a spiritual shovel and you dig. Be productive. You know, my preacher, for years, he had had people that, that didn't like him and he was attacked a national attack had come upon him and it was horrible it was just horrible the world's largest sunday school we were in the middle of this attack and we're bleeding and beat up and it's horrible he called his assistant pastors into his office said men we're going through a lot right now and it's just bad he said i have a little idea i thought we were all going to get together and cry because it seemed like a good thing to do I thought we were all going to lick our wounds together. I figured we were going to we were going to throw the biggest pity party at yeah. And we could throw a party there. He said, "I got this idea. During this battle, let's decide to reenact Pentecost Sunday and have 3,000 people saved on one day." We all went And though he did not, in a way he did, he passed out the shovel. He said, we're not going to stare at this burden. Get you a shovel, boys. Let's dig. And we dug. And we dug. It wasn't long. We forgot we were in a battle. We forgot that it hurt. 
we forgot we were in a valley. And we dug. I remember the day we had over 3,000 people saved in one day. Saved. And it wasn't on a mountaintop. It was in the valley. When I seen this passage of scripture, it said they kept digging in the valley. And digging in the valley brought such a powerful, powerful result. Hey, let me say this. And thirdly, keep digging in the valley so that you don't fall behind. Let, let me give you a little practical application here. When hard times come, you do not have to fall behind. Or don't fall behind any more than what you have to. Listen, if you get hit with a heavy burden this afternoon, I'd recommend you go to work tomorrow. You say, you're heartless. No, I'm trying to tell you how to get through this burden. Get up, go to work. You say, something hit me physically. Well, you're going to need money. I'd go to work tomorrow. You're going to make it worse. Hey, it may be harder to achieve something in the valley, but you can still achieve. It may be harder to be a little more productive in the valley, but you can still be productive. It may be harder to go forward in the valley, but you can still go forward. Folks, don't just suffer in the valley. Dig. Dig. Do you know that if you have an ingrown toenail and you say, I've got an ingrown toenail. It hurts really bad. I think I'll stay home and not go to church. You could have come to church with your sore toe. You know where you're at is not going to take that pain away. Folks, don't let a broken heart break your schedule. Don't let the pain stop you from doing the things that need to be done. You get hit with the burden, so you let the house go. Then you're double, then you're double dog depressed because you got the burden and your house is a pigsty. Clean it. You say you're meddling. No, I'm preaching. Yeah, come on, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dig in the valley, and it will keep your mind busy. When I get hit with the heartache, when I get hit with the burden, I start filling my schedule up. I make it even tighter. You say, why? I don't want to think about my burden. You say, well, well when are you going to think about it? I schedule a time to think about it. You, you say, what? Oh, yeah. I keep myself busy. I, put, I pick a particular time to think about that burden, to work on that burden. Then I put that burden away. I pull my shovel out and I said, I'm going to go live. Amen. I'm yeah. going to go live. I'm going to dig while I'm in this valley. I'm going to get something done. You know something? When I have a personal heartache and I schedule a whole bunch of appointments with people that have personal heartaches, I get to spend my day helping somebody else, trying to solve their problem, and I forget all about mine. Yeah. Amen. We, uh, when I was a, a young man, and by the way, I still am. Right. If you think my hair's gray, it's not. This is silver. <laughs> and there is a difference. Amen. But I was, uh, I was 17 years old, too young. I was an assistant pastor at a church. And we hired a man. And it was the first man hired on paid staff at our church. And I'd never seen one of these before. A paid staff member. Well, his name was Mike. We had met with the pastor. And <clears throat> the pastor had said to Mike, said, you know, Mike, you're living in the mobile home out behind the church. But we've got to get a sewer line dug. And it was about, oh, 40 yards from the mobile home up to the church where we could tap into the sewer line. And the pastor said, it took all the money that we had basically to get you moved here. You all will have to use uh, the showers and restrooms and everything in the church building until we can get a ditch dug for the uh, pipe that we'll have to lay for that sewer. And pastor said it's going to take us a month or so to raise the money. And we shut down the meeting. Mike and I went to the parking lot. Mike called me over. He said, hey, I'm wondering something. Uh, did you go to the public school? I said, I did. He said, did you take a shop class or mechanics class? I did. He said, do you know how to use tools? I said, I do. He said, do you know how to use a shovel? I said, I do. He said, tomorrow morning, 5 a.m., bring your gloves. I'm trying to figure out what are we going to do? 
I was stupid, still am. But I showed up 5 a.m. You know what we did all day? We were digging a sewer pipe, a, a trench for it. We dug all day. Mike decided he was going to dig when the financial chips were down. Hey, you got a business? Can I tell you the way out of it? Dig your way out of it. Dig. 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 Stay productive while you're in the valley. Do you think that God allowed you to go in the valley so you could roll over and play dead? That's not going to solve your problem. Let me say number four. Keep digging in the valley because, I'm sorry to tell you this, you, you're going to have another one. We don't only have one valley in life. Life has more than one valley. In 1 Kings 20, verse number 28, in the midst of the verse, it says, The Lord is the God of the hills, but he is, but, and of the valleys. There's a plural S there. That valleys, there's more than one. You all know that children have valleys. We sometimes don't understand it. And if you're not careful, a child will have a valley and an adult will say, oh, come on, that's not so bad. Well, it's as big to them at their age as your battle is to yours. But the child has to learn how to dig his way through that valley because it won't be long until the child becomes a teenager. And then the teenager is going to have a valley. Teenager, learn to dig in the valley. You say, I'm going through a tough time right now, Brother Owens. Well, don't stop studying it for school while you're going through a tough time. You need to go ahead and pass your courses even though your, your heart's broken. Why? you got to learn to dig through the valleys. If you're not careful, you'll fail this year. You'll be sorry. You'll look back and say, that was the year I had a burden. You know something? You could have gone ahead and passed while you still had a burden. Dig in the valley. And you better learn to dig when you're a teenager. You say, why? One of these days, you're going to be a young adult. You know what's going to happen? You're going to have a valley, and you better know how to dig. And then you're going to get married, and you're going to have a valley. It's called your mother-in-law, and you're going to have to know how to dig. And then the, the people are spreading false doctrine everywhere. I heard someone say, it's too cheaper for two to live than one. That's a lie right out of hell. It's not cheaper for two to live than one. It costs you money to have a wife. Hey, do you know after you're a young married couple and you, you, you grow a little while and you hit those middle ages, you're still going to have burdens. You say, well, I can't wait until I'm a senior citizen and I don't have burdens anymore. I'm sorry to tell you this. You keep facing them. So I'd like to recommend something to you. Learn what I'm telling you now because you're going to go through it again. You might not go through an identical burden or valley, but you're not going to have just this one. Right. Keep digging. Let every valley train you for the next valley. Amen. 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 But then, number five, let me say, keep digging. Keep digging in your valley because th there may be people watching you and someone, I think somebody probably needs to admire how you make it through the valley. Good. Come on. Right. Genesis 26, 20 says, And the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And here's what happened. These people were looking at the guys that had been digging. Now they're popping up wells in water. And someone said, Look at what they did. We want that. We want to be a part of that. Hey, while you're in the valley, live in such a way that the lost look at you and say, Wow. Yeah, come on. Look at that. I wonder how they're making it through that. Well, I'm glad you asked. Right? Yeah. I've been with the lily of the valley. Yeah. Hey, even, even the weaker Christians, some of you that have been around a while, uh, you, need to, you need to start living like you know what you're doing. And I'm not talking about just on Monday. I'm talking about in the valley. Young Christians need to learn how to make it through the valley. They need your example. You know, Christians do better in the valley than do the lost by far. Older Christians are to dig in the valley, so they're a good example to the younger Christians. But listen to this. 
We, we need to live in the valley in such a way that others could mimic the way that we lived in the valley. Right. I'm going to keep digging in the valley. Because if somebody's watching me, I want them to know when they're going through a valley, they need to pick up a spiritual shovel and dig. Amen. Dig. You parents want to do your kids a favor? Oh, oh. Don't you throw in the towel. Yeah, on, your man. kids are watching you. Amen. Don't you put your tail between your legs and run from an old-time religion church and go to some church oh, that's worthless. On, you show your kids how to stand up and oh, dig. Yeah. Dig. Yeah. Dig. I don't know what I taught my kids, but I did teach them how to dig. Amen. I'd be ashamed if my kids looked at me and said, my dad's a quitter. If none of you mattered at all, and you do, but if none of you mattered at all, I've got some kids that need to look at a daddy that's got some backbone that says, I'm in a valley. Hand me that shovel. Amen. Let's make something happen here. Amen. Folks, don't become backslidden in the valley. Right. Don't become bitter in the valley. Don't become angry. In the valley, and if you are, get angry at old smutty face, oh, yeah. the one that filled the wells in the first place. Hey, don't become useless in the valley. Don't become cynical in the valley. Don't become critical in the valley. We go through the valley with dignity. We go through the valley with some spiritual pride. Hey, don't become hateful and vengeful in the valley. Why don't you dig in the valley? With a good attitude. Now, if you're going to go through the valley and you say, I'll dig, but I'll have a bad attitude. I'd rather you dig in the valley with a bad attitude than not dig. But we also have the choice of digging in the valley with a good attitude. Okay, God, I'll go through this. It's ridiculous. I trust you. Right. How about this? God, you know everything. I trust you. Yeah. Let's do this. Amen. Yeah, come on. Dig. Amen. Dig. Hey, dig in your valley with faith in God. Amen. Dig in your valley oh, yeah. with the taste of victory on your lips. Amen. Dig in your valley with a little joy, even though the tears run down your face while you're digging and smiling. Dig with love in your heart. If you don't remember anything that I've said today, you'll remember this word. Dig. Amen. Somebody needs to wake up tomorrow morning and decide, you know what? Oh, yeah. It's digging time. Amen. Somebody here, you need to get to digging for your Sunday school class and digging for your bus route. Come on. I don't know who you are, but you better dig for your marriage. Amen. Don't you let the devil bury you Amen. Dig your way out of this thing. I don't care how deep it is. I don't care how thick it is. Dig. Salvage that business. Get you a shovel. And dig your way out. They, uh, They had crucified Jesus. They put him in a grave. I think the devil said, got him, boys. <laughs> we got him. Three days later, and don't miss this, they said there was an earthquake and then a resurrection. Say, what was that earthquake? Jesus pulled out a shovel. He said, we're digging out of here, boys. (laughs) And up from the grave. Amen. He arose. Dig. Dig, Christian. I don't know what you're going through. But you can do this. You can make it. You can take it. But I'm just recommending to you. You keep moving forward. Dig. 
your way through it. Don't be a setting target for the devil. My coach was not even a saved man. <laughs> but I can still see the veins in his neck on the sideline as we're playing football. Dig, Owens! Dig! And I think Jesus looks down to you and me and says, Dig, my child. Dig. Dig. If you're here today and you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I can highly recommend him. Amen. He can save you. That's right. That's right. He can assure you a place in heaven. Yes. And then, then he becomes your coach for the trials of life. He'll help you to dig through it. Right. Now, he'll do all the saving. You don't have to dig yes. to get that. He dug to get it for you. But after you get saved, there is, I promise you, there is a power. There is a strength that is injected into you at salvation time. And you'll say, you know, since I've been saved, I feel like I can. Instead of always thinking, I can't. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'll ask two questions, and then I'm going to turn things over to the preacher. The first question is this. If you died today, do you know for a fact you'd go to heaven? Do you know for certain that you're saved? If you're here today and you've never been born again, I want to welcome you to the Savior. Is there anybody here today that would say, Pastor Owens, I am not saved. I don't know if I died today, I'd go, I'd go to heaven. Pray for me. I don't know I'm born again. Would you raise your hand, and, and I will. I'm going to say a prayer for you. Just slip it up. God bless you. I see the hand. God bless you. I see that hand. Someone else, you say, I'm not born again. Pray for me. You may put your hand down. Here's what's going to happen. In a moment, we're going to stand. After we stand, the pianist is going to play. And then we're going to invite you. And if you would like to come forward, you just leave your seat, walk forward. There'll be someone down here that can take a Bible and show you how to be saved. They're not going to embarrass you. We're not trying to embarrass you. We just want to show you in the Bible how to be born again. There'll be others coming. You won't come alone. Secondly, though, let me talk to some of you maybe that are already saved. Is there anybody here that would say, Brother Owens, there's something in my life right now. And God brought that something to my, my mind. And there's no doubt in my mind, I need to do some digging. And God's spoken to me about digging today. Would you let God see your hand? Oh, hands up everywhere. You may put your hand down. Hey, if you got some digging to do, it might be wise that you leave your seat, come down here, get on your knees and tell the Lord, say, Lord, I'm, I'm getting ready to do some digging. I'm going to need some help. Let's all stand to our feet with our heads bowed, our eyes closed. Would the pianist begin to play? Christian, do you need the altar? Hey, do you need to get saved? If you need to get saved, just step out. Look at all the people coming. If you want to get saved, just come our way.
serve a risen Savior. Jesus rules and reigns. The heavens, they cheer us on. Our labor, Let's sing that first verse again there, Brother Kerry. The first verse in the chorus. We have labored in the vineyard of the Lord. You could almost sing it. We have labored in the valley. You know, there are valleys in life. But we had to just pick up the shovel and keep digging. There been many times as a pastor that when I hit that valley, I wanted to quit. I'll be honest with you. Throw in the towel find that when you pick up that shovel you get some renewed hope we can make it through this let's sing it together sing it church all of us singing and it seems has stolen our reward but God but God has not forgotten forgotten and when he calls us home we'll receive, we'll receive eternal, treasure eternal treasure and a place, a place the sing it now it's not in vain it's not, not in vain it's not Vith, if you'll sing that second verse, you sing it. We'll listen to you sing, and then we'll join in the chorus. You sing it. Sing it as a solo. We'll listen to it. God has seen our faithful service through the years. Yes, He has, church. All the heartaches. All the heartaches, all the burdens, all the tears. But do not be discouraged. Do not be discouraged. There's a purpose, there's a plan. There's a reason for each trial. Oh, yes, there is. So trust. Amen. Let's sing it together, church. It's not in vain. Amen. Amen. nothing that we do that's in vain while we were having church junior church was going on I'm going to ask Malachi to come up here and I'm going to ask Andrea to come up here come up here with pastor come up here okay come hold my hand all right both of you guys both these little kids were sitting in junior church they're coming down to make a public profession of faith they both received Christ as their personal savior amen amen what a blessing. You know, these kids, the devil wants them. 
This is why we got to give them the gospel. And they got a living soul. And they understand. When you tell them that Jesus loves them, they believe it. And that Jesus died for them, they believe it. And uh, I know Mama may be over there happy. Yeah, I got born again. Amen. Mama rode our Sunday school bus to church. How old were you when you started riding our bus to church? Eight, Eight years old. <laughs> Eight years old, started riding our Sunday school. And now she gets to see the fruit now. And bringing her son to church, and he got saved. That's what it's all about right there, amen? And so happy for the both of you, amen? Let's give him a big hand. You all can be seated, amen. <laughs> Somebody asked D.L. Moody one day, any converts today? He said, yeah, we had two and a half. He said, oh, you had two adults saved and one child? He's like, No. He said, we had two children and one adult saved. You see, the children have all their life to give to Jesus. The adult only has half their life to give to Jesus. Amen. So we had two and a half saved today. Amen. And I thank God for this. How about this? Um, first name. Austin. Austin. Austin has come trusting Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And then we're even blessed with Andreas. Andreas de la Cruz has come to join our church. Amen. Amen. He has been saved and scripturally baptized, and all in favor of receiving him into our membership signify by saying, I, I. and impose the same, and is carried. I, may God be blessed. <laughs> Souls were saved today. Somebody joined into the body of Christ, amen. And we all are leaving here encouraged, going to go grab our shovels and dig in the valley. And dig in the valley. What a blessing to be in the house of God today. Thank you for your attendance. Now, it's not done. If you thought you enjoyed this morning, you want to come back tonight. Brother Jeff Owens will be preaching for us tonight. And if you'll walk down this hallway, down at the end of this hallway there, there are two book tables there. He's got... He doesn't sell CDs anymore. They have these little thumb drives. But there's some sermons in there. There's some things over there that I highly recommend you go over there. He's got some great books. If you're going through a hard time, a trial, a burden, he's got, I mean, it's first come, first serve. He doesn't have much over there. I highly recommend that you get over there, take a look at that, and see that if you can't get something there that you can take home and listen and re-listen to. Amen. Been good to be in the house of God today. We'll see you back tonight at uh, 6 o'clock, and uh, we'll want you to be here. Father, thank you for what we've heard. Uh, send us away with your protections. Lord, thank you for the visitors that have come today. And Father, may this not be the only time they visit, but may you bring them back with us again. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. <laughs>